Hi, welcome to Baylor Medical Center at McKinney. I'm Ashley Howland. I'm the social media manager for Baylor Healthcare System, and this is Scott Peake, the president of Baylor Med Medical Center at McKinney. We're here today to show you one of the, the newest members of the Baylor family. This is one of the most advanced hospitals in our healthcare system, um, one, of the most, one of the most green facilities in our healthcare system, and it's brand new to the McKinney community. So I'll uh, go to Scott and we'll ask him a couple of questions about the hospital and its features, and then we'll tour you around the rest of the hospital in just a moment. So Scott, tell us a little bit about why we chose McKinney as a community to expand the Baylor brand. Well, Baylor always goes through the same process when they're looking to enter a new community. First off, we want community support. We want to make sure we're welcomed by the communities that we enter. We want to make sure there's a need. But we also want to make sure there's physician support. We have both of those in spades here, both community support and physician support. And so when we look at the growth in McKinney and the surrounding communities, uh, and when we hear from those stakeholders, the physicians in the community, that we want an uh, institution like Baylor in our communities, it's really a no-brainer, so that's why Baylor invested the kind of money that we did in such a beautiful hospital like this. We're positioned to grow with the community, so as McKinney and the surrounding communities grow, we can grow with it. Great. And so I know you guys just had a grand opening celebration this past weekend. We were expecting about 1,000 people, and we had like 3,500. Were you guys expecting that? You know, I, we weren't, uh, but we were, we were blown away by the support, by the excitement. I think people are excited about Baylor being here, and I think it's neat to be able to look behind the curtains of a hospital, so a lot of people don't get to look in an operating room mm -hmm. or in a cath lab, but mm -hmm. at that community event, they were able to. They were able to talk to physicians, talk to our leaders, and uh, really just get a feel for this hospital, because after all, it's not Baylor's hospital. This is a community asset, and so we're excited that folks uh, took the time to come out and, and take a look at their hospital. That's great. So um, this is one of the most green facilities um, in the Baylor healthcare system, and I know we're going towards a LEED certification. So can you tell us a little bit about what some of the features are that make this a green facility? Sure. Uh, in order to become LEED certified, and we will be uh, the first hospital in Baylor and one of just a handful in the state to be LEED certified, uh, you've got to do a certain amount of things uh, that, of course, are environmentally friendly, whether that's uh, the types of plants that you use, uh, whether that's whether or not you pull water from the city or from a well, the types of materials that we use in construction or recycling. So there's a whole list of 30 some odd things that we do to make sure we can become LEED certified. And that just signals our commitment uh, to the environment and the community we serve. Great. Um, and I know we have here at the hospital lots of artwork, all by local Texas artists. We've got a sculpture down here that you, you may or may not be able to see. We'll have, we actually have a video about our artwork that we're going to show you guys uh, a little later, or we may just uh, put it in the uh, show notes on YouTube. But can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the artwork and some of the pieces and where they came from? Sure. As you said, all of our uh, commissioned artwork was done by local Texas artists. You know, McKinney's slogan, Unique by Nature, is something that we took to heart. So throughout the facility, we, re we really wove into our design some, some uh, nature concepts. We also have down a long corridor pictures of historic landmarks in McKinney that we matted on an aluminum frame. So we know that uh, art is important to McKinney, and so we want to make sure that we're supportive of their desire to uh, really grow the arts. And so that's why you'll see some of the beautiful artwork that you see in our facility. Right. Okay, well, we're going to go next to uh, Jennifer McDowell. She's in the Women's Center um, in one of our private NICU suites, and she's going to um, tell us a little bit more about that and interview some of the staff members. So, Jennifer, take it away. Great. Thanks, Ashley. I'm here with um, Deb Maitre, and she's the Director of Women and Infant Services here at Baylor McKinney. And Ashley mentioned that we're here in one of the private NICU suites. Um, what is a private NICU, what is a NICU suite and why, what are the benefits of it being private? Sure, um, we have one of the only single room or private NICU suites in the, in the north um, Metroplex area. Certainly a lot of the NICUs around town or around the area are more of the traditional kind. They have a probably a six to eight bed nursery for that houses six to eight babies in one room. Obviously that is a great efficient way to take care of babies but it's also um, has its downsides and one that it doesn't give a lot of privacy or, um, or or just family area. So families when they're there have to oftentimes sit in you know a chair just at the baby's bedside and feel more like a visitor. This this private room kind of concept 
um, allows the parents to be here with their baby throughout their hospitalization. We even have a space for the parents to sleep at night um, so that they can stay here and be part, you know, when you've had a baby, you know, you don't want to leave your baby in the hospital. Especially when the baby might be a little thicker than exactly. not very healthy exactly. as you'd like the baby to be. It's, it's nice to have a private area right. to kind of be right. with them. And I'm going to lift up the computer here so that people can see this area. And this is the actual neonatal intensive care unit. So it's it's just a whole a whole room. And there's is there nine private? There's nine beds. Um, there are eight rooms. We out we have a larger room that will um, handle up to four babies. So if we have multiple, say quadruplets, oh wow, yeah, um, we could handle that. So what about just a regular healthy mom? and um, the dad. Tell me about those rooms and what they can expect when they um, give birth here. Basically. Sure. We have um, eight LDRs, which is labor delivery recovery room, as well as our labor and delivery suite includes two operating rooms with the PACU and a small triage area. So for moms, when they come in in labor, uh, we can, we'll, we'll take care of the mom in a lovely uh, birthing room kind of uh, setting where it doesn't look like a hospital room. It looks like a hotel. Room. Yeah, the decor I would love in my own home. Let me it's just say it's very, gorgeous. It's very, very aesthetically pleasing. It's very comforting. It's very. Um, all of the planning for the hospital, I think, was done with um, the colors and the artwork to to enhance the healing kind of environment. So um, women in labor in, are in a very comforting, soothing kind of environment. Um, once they've delivered them, they are moved to our new family unit, which again, the rooms are beautifully appointed, look like suites in a hotel. Um, we have your own refrigerator for yeah. them to bring on their own special foods that maybe someone from home has brought them. We have room service. We have um, quiet time and cuddle time for mom and babies every afternoon, and we we bake cookies for them in the afternoon. That's what you have um, to run off. You yes, have to run off what I need to do. <laughs> so another one, well, two uh -huh. quick questions. So how many babies have been born? And talk about the excitement, because when I was here on Friday for the grand opening, there were mothers that said they had been crossing their fingers that their baby didn't come yes. come early so that they could give birth here at yes. Baylor McKinney. Yes. Talk so about the excitement. We've had just an un unbelievable response from the community and, and young families and young families to be in the area um, are lining up literally to deliver their babies here. Um, we had four babies on our opening day and since then we've had about three or four more so we've had a total of about eight babies born here so far. It's only been three days, right? right. Four days. Well, four days if you count today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we've had a great, great response. We've got um, Parents, uh, people showing up wanting tours every hour of the day, believe it or not. And so someone's <laughs> expecting out there and is maybe looking um, at different hospitals, can they schedule a tour to see the facility? Absolutely. We um, have a couple options for people. We have a group tour every other Monday evening from 7 to 8, and they can go online to uh, BaylorHealth.com slash McKinney Babies and register for that or they can call 1-800-4-BAYLOR and get registered for that as well. If they want a private tour, that's a little more, um, that's a little more complicated, I guess. It's not, not meant to be, but I really need to set an appointment for that so that nurses don't have to get pulled away from the patients that they're taking care of. So if they um, contact me through my email address, I'm happy to set up a, a private tour at any time. Great, and we, we'll put that in the show notes afterwards. And I have one more question before I let sure. you go. And it's about Simply Moms uh -huh. and the services there because they offer you know, lactation consultants and really help the mom even after she leaves the hospital Absolutely. doors, which is so valuable. Absolutely, and this is a great resource for the community for um, new families. It's, it's a mom and baby boutique which is really set to help support and promote breastfeeding and breastfeeding success for our moms, our new moms and babies. And so anybody, they don't have to have delivered here, but we have a lactation consultant that staffs the, staffs the store every day. Um, we aren't open on Sundays. That's the only day that we're not open. However, the lactation consultants are here every day. Um, we, are, we have a breast pump rental program. We have a full complement of breast breast pump supplies, breastfeeding supplies, as well as all kinds of really great things that support um, baby mom bonding. We have slings. We have 
Um, and those are, once a mom leaves, right. you know, she maybe has questions that right. she didn't even know to ask when she right. was with the nurses, and she can call absolutely. the people, the moms at Simply Moms or the lactation consultants yes. there. Yes, absolutely. They're there, and they're um, more than willing to answer questions, and they, they can provide lactation consultations. They can come in and, and meet with the lactation consultant um, right. as well. Great. Well, I'll let you go bake cookies and give them to the new mom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great. And I will bring in now, um, Melissa Winter is going to sit down because uh, she is the Chief Nursing Officer. And, you know, we talked about kind of the design of this private neonatal intensive care unit. But really there was a lot of design that went into every single room. Um, kind of talk about that, Melissa. What went into the design of the hospital as a whole and then the individual patient rooms? So I can only really speak to the last 12 months since I've been here, but really for the past four to five years when Baylor knew they were going to be uh, having this journey in McKinney, they brought clinicians from around our Baylor healthcare system, internal to Baylor as well as out external to say what are best practices, what are people doing, what do people want to have and see when they come into a facility, and I can't tell you the amount of work to say. Um, does it make sense? Is it patient and, and, and family friendly as well as is, is safe? And so the proximity to the workstations, the proximity to the restrooms um, are all thinking in line of the quickest way and safest way for our patients. So not only for them, but I can't uh, stress enough for staff. You know, it's work smarter, not harder uh, mentality. So really trying to think about from an ED up to the ICU, to the med surge, as well as into the women's and infants, and as well as NICU. Where can I get my supplies and the things that I need quickly um, to provide to the more time at the at the bedside? And that's what these rooms um, really are doing. And um, they have just uh, hit it all the park for, with this design. Everything's a bow tie. Uh, kind of curvature look, so at one nurse's station you can visually see all the way down to the other one. They have med rooms, supply rooms, uh, everything at the, their fingertips. So there's not a lot of walking and spending time trying to find supplies. Uh, so they really get the patient uh, back into the room with, with where they need to be. Yeah, and that's great. And you, but you also mentioned the uh, patient's family member. Absolutely. Because when, when you're in the hospital, kind of so is your family because they're there yes. with you. What was taken into account for the patient's family members? Well, you know, the first thing that was important to us is absolutely no signs that say waiting rooms and or visitation hours. So we feel very strongly that um, if I was in the hospital, you're not pulling my husband away from me. Um, and, and that's the majority of what folks feel. Um, they recover well. We encourage the families to spend the night with them. We have open visitation hours. Um, we provide amenities for families just as well as the patients. You know, Deb didn't mention, but right around the corner is a family suite for the families to have a full time, uh, a full kitchen, and a TV, a lounge, showers, because we really want them to, you know, yes, we're taking care of the patient, but they're just as important to us and really want them in instrumental in their care. So um, we think we've done a pretty, pretty good job of including them in all of that. So how is the hospital opened on Friday? So tell oh, me, how did that go? I'm sure it's like, well, oh, you're burning you know, a baby on the It is. I, I tell everybody that, you know, opening is very much, you go through your, your um, you know, uh, trimesters and all of those um, woes and, and good times and bad times. But this has been phenomenal. We couldn't have asked for a more successful opening. Um, Liz Fagan, Dr. Fagan in the ED would probably uh, say something different because she's been working constantly and is very, very busy in the ED, but it's been great. We had a, a, a beautiful ceremony that early in the morning um, with the staff to really, to really um, open it and open it well, and um, we already had our first uh, patient waiting at uh, 4.50 in the morning <laughs> and uh, wanted to be the first one through the doors, and it's been very successful. We have not slowed down. Um, we're opening other wings that we did not anticipate. Oh, we wow. even need to, to do that, but that's great. Um, yeah. We're prepared, and we've got phenomenal staff and physicians and, and leaders, so we, we couldn't be more blessed with what, what we're seeing right now. Well, that's so great. Well, thank yes, you so absolutely. much. I'll let you get back to the okay. busy hospital. Thank you. Thank you, and I will now send it to Julie Smith, who is in the um, emergency department, the very busy emergency department that Melissa was just talking about. 
people are here and this is actually probably the loudest part of the hospital so you'll have to bear with us if you hear sounds in the background. I'm here with the medical director, Dr. Liz Fagan, and she can talk a little bit about um, opening day and then also I want us to touch after on the, the view that we can see from the windows out here. So tell us about opening day. Well, opening day uh, was very much looked forward to by all of our staff and it was a lighting ceremony when we turned on the lights for the emergency signs. I missed it, however, because uh, our president found a patient uh, was waiting out front eagerly to be a patient here. And when he found out that they were already waiting, it was a young family, he said, you know, we're not waiting until 5 a.m. The hospital's open now. So they brought the patient in 4.15, and we started care right then and there, and we have been running ever since. Perfect. That's a great way to open. I know the community has been looking forward to this. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, the community piece, what you really hope um, and what you have seen so far as, as far as employees and that kind of thing? It's, um, it's, I'm not from McKinney, but I will tell you I, I, I absolutely love this place. The community itself is so incredibly warm, the patients, the staff that's here. And the interesting thing to me was when I was brought on board was what I found was is that the majority of our nurses are actually from the McKinney area and they so wanted to be a part of this that they left their jobs to join the Baylor healthcare system over the last year or two so that they could be a part of the opening of this as it came online. And that really talks about the loyalty to the city of McKinney, to the community of McKinney. I've met really great physicians, I've met really great administrators, everybody is all about helping one another. It doesn't have that uh, interdepartmental feel, that's my department, your department, really it's just our hospital, our community, we want to do the best that we can for all of the patients in the McKinney area, um, including really the EMS units. We've had just a phenomenal response from them. They take fabulous care of the patients. We've had multiple cities and been really, really impressed by the 911 services that are available here. And uh, we've had um, ambulances almost every day. Um, and the patients that are coming um, are so appreciative of the care that they receive. And we just want to be a part of that so that when a patient calls 911, that the care starts immediately with the 911 call and doesn't end until we've got a diagnosis and we've got them ready to go home or go wherever they need to go. Um, and then she had mentioned earlier about the view that I'm looking out at. I'm sorry you guys can't see it, but in our ER waiting room, it's probably the most beautiful waiting room I've ever been in, and I've been doing this for a really long time. But as I sit here, what I'm looking out over is our chapel with the most beautiful um, stained glass cross. And I have to admit that at night, sometimes um, when the ER is really chaotic, you come out, you can just take a deep breath and look at that and get a little bit of peace and then go back in. We've been really busy. It's been great, and everybody's really happy to be here. You know, it's it's not you know, it's not my room. It's not your room. It's just our room, our patients. What can we all do to make sure that every patient gets the best experience here? And um, as of this morning, they were already adding additional staff so we can open more rooms and make sure that we see people as quickly as possible. I can tell there's really that kind of friendly feel. I've seen some of your patients that have walked out of the ED wave to you as we got ready to go <laughs> live here. So you can tell there's really just that, that feeling of, of comfort. Um, so we'll go ahead and put some pictures up at the end of this so that you can see what we're talking about as far as the cross outside and the outside eating area because it really is lovely out here. Um, and we'll send it back to Ashley. Okay, great. Hi. I'm, thank you, Julie and Jennifer. You guys did a great job. That was a really comprehensive overview of the two most busy parts of this hospital, the Women's Center and the Emergency Department. But now I'm going to talk to Erin Weaver. She's actually a nurse manager in our uh, surgical services. She's going to talk to us a little bit about the ORs and the recovery uh, units. So Erin, um, I know that we have a Da Vinci robot here in our ORs in our operating rooms. And for those of you who aren't aware of that, what that is, it's basically a robotic uh, surgical device, basically a robot that can perform surgery um, as you know, maneuvered by the, the surgeon. So Erin, um, tell us a little bit about how that works and why you would want to have surgery with a device like that. Sure, the um, Da Vinci robot, the way it's designed is it has several points that goes into the body that the surgeon himself doesn't actually stick his hands into the patient. He sits off into a little booth and can kind of guide it from that standpoint. And it's almost as if he's doing a little bit of a video game in the back, but he's actually performing the true surgery. And the key point about that is 
it's um, more of a least invasive type of procedure. So the physician actually doesn't stick his hands inside that patient and opens them completely up in order to do the surgery. So the robot is able to perform it and do it um, from that standpoint. And so typically what happens is the length of stay is a lot shorter. So the female came in to have an abdominal hysterectomy. Her length of stay on average would be about four to five days in a hospital. With the Da Vinci robot, it's actually a day or two. So it significantly lessens the length of stay and how long a patient has to stay in a hospital. So that's great. It's a good tool. That's so. great. And we're actually not in the OR because, as you know, those are very sterile areas of a hospital. So we had to bring Erin out here with us to the lobby. But um, we'd love to, sh to show you that. And in fact, I think we have some videos on our YouTube channel that we can point you to later that show you a little bit about how the Da Vinci robot works. So Erin, tell us a little bit about, I know we have a very sophisticated GI lab here. We do. Um, so do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. Our um, scopes that we use to do colonoscopies and um, what's called EGDs, where they put the scope down to take a look at the esophagus and the stomach, um, are the latest and greatest scopes that Olympus provides. And so they're in high definition. So this physician is actually able, to, when he does the procedure, to see in high def every little intricate part that's inside that person's body. And so these are the absolute latest and greatest. They just came out, like the end of June, the beginning of July, and we've been blessed to be able to have those scopes. So um, like I said, the GI doctors, the gastrointestinal doctors are able to pick up on things that maybe they couldn't see with a regular scope. Right, that's awesome. And so I know we also in the OR have uh, private uh, pre-op units. Um, can you tell us why that's, that's such a big deal and why that's unique? Sure. Well, when patients typically come in for surgery the, um, the day of, the rooms that we have designated are private rooms where the patient comes in, actually a door shut. Most typical day surgery rooms have curtains that they pull but you can still kind of hear what's going on with the patient next to them. And so in order to protect that person's privacy and to allow family to sit in there with them while the patient's being prepped and ready for surgery, um, to be able to have that private space means a lot. And so we hear a lot of positive feedback from the patients who come in, like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much for being able to provide a space where, you know, you could shut the door and it's more quiet and it's not, you know, you have to hear what's going on with the neighbor next door and yeah. what all his ailments in and why they came in and yeah. that type of thing. So... It's a great space that we have. Well, that's great. I'm sure that's been really well received. I know you guys are already doing surgeries. We just opened up Friday, we so we're already pretty full and busy yep. in the operating room. We're hopping. So. We're hopping, and um, everybody's loving it. The staff is great. Everybody's completely excited about having the patients here, so, um, you know, we're just happy to be here. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us, you. Erin. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this tour of Baylor Medical Center at McKinney. Um, you can go to BaylorHealth.com slash McKinney for more information about the hospital. You can also follow us on Twitter at, at BaylorHealth, hashtag BaylorMcKinney, um, or you can check us out on Facebook or Twitter um, or on Google+. Plus. So thank you for joining us, and we'll have this video archived uh, for those of you that weren't able to watch it live on our YouTube channel. Thanks again.